Your girl has a salary now and she's living the good life. Hey everyone, it's Jayla. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you all the books I've acquired over the last three months. I have a book addiction, so this video is probably going to be on the longer side, but I'm going to rapid fire go through everything because I don't even know a lot of the synopses for these. And also, can we talk about how I've just been running with saying synopses for all this time and I have no idea if that's actually a word. Anyway, I'm not gonna bother with really detailed descriptions of these books because there are so many, I have not counted how many yet. These are just some books that I have found thrifted, they were sent to me or I bought them or they just happened to fall into my hands somehow. So let's get into it. As for the books that were sent to me, starting with The Initial Insult by Mindy McGinnis, this was sent to me because I won a Goodreads giveaway and I enter a lot of giveaways and not necessarily knowing what the book is about. So I just, I recognize the author and I liked the cover and so I won this. Again, I guess kind of like a YA thriller. It says a ruthlessly compelling story of a friendship gone wrong. So yeah, something goes wrong in here. They actually sent me two copies. I don't know if it was a mistake on their part or if they just wanted me to have two copies. Um, I gave one to my sister who will most likely read this way before I do. And so I'll let you know what she thinks. Come on, or don't. Come on or don't. Oh, are you gonna sit here with me? <laughs> you gonna do this haul with me? That's fun. Okay. Well, he's just gonna chill and do what he does best, which is be cute. Um, the next book that was sent to me was Hurricane Summer by Asha Bromfield. I do not know what this is about because I'm terrible, but Wednesday Books sent this to me. Um, it's an advanced reader's edition and it comes out in May 2021. So I'm definitely going to read it before then and be better about promoting it because look at this beautiful cover, look at this beautiful black girl, love to see it. I also got this funky little packaging for The Other Black Girl by Zakia Delilah Harris, which I just talked about in my last video, so I won't go into too much depth here. So go watch my April TBR video if you want to know more about it. But this is a book that comes out in June. It is a thriller that takes place in the publishing industry and I'm very excited to get to this one. It's one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I've heard mixed things about it. But personally, I feel like I can relate to the subject matter a lot and it's going to hit close to home. I don't know. We will see how I like it and I will get back to you. Maybe I'll do like a vlog for this one or something. I mentioned in my very long ago January wrap up that Katie from Thoughts of Katie sent me Paper Girls Volume 1. And so I got to try that out and I ended up buying Paper Girls Volume 2. And I'm enjoying the story so far. I haven't continued on with it since then. I will be picking up Volume 3 maybe in the near future. We should really hold back on the spending. But uh, your girl has a salary now and... She's living a good life. Okay, so my- Be aggressive! Be Now my favorite portion of this video has arrived and that is because my friend Caleb sent me a beautiful, just giant box of books. I just was not expecting them to send me all these books and they did anyway for some reason because they're super nice and they have a YouTube channel that they talk about books on sometimes if you want to go follow, I will link it down below. But they sent me all of these and I'm very excited to go through them. I have Pet by Quick Amezzi. They sent me the entire Broken Earth trilogy box set, which just, I was spoiled with this, I really was. And then they sent me How Long Till Black Future Month in hardcover. I did have it in paperback right there, but uh, this is nice to have and I'm really glad to have it because this is one of my favorite books of 2020. So it's really cool to have another copy. And they sent me Nubia, Ooh. and they sent me Nubia, which I'm not really sure. Is it like a graphic novel about a black Wonder Woman? I'm really excited to read this because I love Wonder Woman and I really enjoy DC Comics and the characters. It's going to expand on that since she is a black character. It says, can you be a hero if society doesn't see you as a person? She's grappling with this conflict where she knows she can be a hero and she displays this Amazonian strength but people don't really want her as their hero and so yeah it's a really interesting story i'm excited to read this and i thank you so much caleb for sending this to me you really did the most and i don't know why you did but i appreciate all of these books wednesday books also sent me can't stop won't stop and this is a hip-hop history so basically there was like a book published like this in the early 2000s and now they've redone it in a YA edition so that young adult readers can read it and learn more about hip hop. I've read a bit of it already and I really enjoy the chapters on female rappers and how they kind of change the game. And there's like a whole section in the back that's labeled 1998 to 2020. And so it's really cool because that's basically my entire life. Like I was born in 1998. So just seeing how much hip hop has changed in just a lifetime was really interesting to see. So yeah, if you're interested in that, check this out. Blah, 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 blah. 
This one is a work perk. Uh, so an editor that I work with, she sent me Everybody, which is an honest and open look at sex from every angle. And it's like just a collection of short, very brief stories um, on people's different sexual experiences. And it was, it's was it been really interesting so far. I haven't like sat down and read the whole thing because it's not really, I don't think it's really that kind of format, but it's definitely a cute coffee table book. Um, so I'll be sure to be I don't know, should I just like take a look at the cover? I don't know if this is something that I should leave displayed on my table, but I'm really enjoying it and it's really beautiful and it's a very well-made book. And the last thing that I have that was sent to me was a giveaway win. I won this from... I won this from an Instagram giveaway hosted by Intellectual Noir. I'll leave them link down below. This was really cool to win because Parable of the Sower is a book that I really want to read. Parable of the Sower is the first Octavia Butler read I want to get through. I don't know if I'll ever read Kindred because I think the content in there is kind of questionable, like will I enjoy it? But um, I have not read any Octavia Butler, which is embarrassing to say. I don't think I'll start with a graphic novel because, um, I don't know, I tried to read the first page and I just feel like you miss a lot if you read an, a graphic novel adaptation. So I really want to read the original content first. But if there is one Octavia Butler book that I will ever get to, I'm hoping that it will be Parable of the Sower, which is why I went to my local bookstore uh, <laughs> a month ago now. Like this is a very long ago haul. All of these things have been coming in for a while. But I went to the bookstore and um, I got Parable of the Sower because I saw it there and I've been meaning to buy it and I had just gotten the graphic novel and I was like, it's time, I gotta get this book. I don't know how I can claim to like sci-fi as much as I do and not have read more Octavia Butler or any of the other iconic legends in the sci-fi realm. And so I'm hoping that I will really enjoy this, but I don't have anything else to say about it that I haven't already said about the graphic novel. I also got from that bookstore Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. I personally have no idea what this is about, which is the theme for this entire video, but I remember distinctly, I went to, I, w I used to go to school in DC and I went to Kramer's Afterwards, which is a really nice independent bookstore in DuPont Circle. And I was looking at this book and the, uh, what's the guy called? The bookseller. The bookseller came up to me as I was reading it. And yes, their job is to sell you books and they want you to spend money. But he came over to me and he was so excited about this book that I was holding in my hands. And he was just saying, oh, it's so good. It's so wonderful. You need to read this. I'm so glad that you like are interested in it. And I ended up leaving without it, which I feel bad about. I definitely waited until he wasn't at the cash register before buying because I ended up getting something not at all as sophisticated as this. My friend has it and she says we're gonna buddy read it together, but we probably won't. I'm looking at it, the pages, the font. I'm probably not gonna buddy read this with her, but <laughs> um, but it's a good way to stay motivated and keep it at the top of my TBR, so. This is another one that I really, really want to read. Moving on, two more books that I bought were Trail of Lightning and Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is the Sixth World Trilogy, I think. There are only two books out right now, but I think this is supposed to be a trilogy. I believe this features a Native American protagonist who is like fighting off something during the apocalypse. I didn't really need to know what the synopsis was about because I really, really loved Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. And so I know that I want to read anything that Rebecca Rowanhorse writes ever again. And so these came before Black Sun and I have some catching up to do, obviously. My friend doesn't like them, but honestly, she's wrong. These covers are epic and I'm very excited to read these. They keep getting put on my monthly TBRs that are fake and I don't actually make those, but I always end up not reading it. And so I just don't want this to be one of those books that sits on my pile. These are going to get read very soon. At another indie bookstore I went to, I ended up picking up On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. I don't know anything about this except sapphic and space. I think there's like a boarding school in space and I have no idea what the actual plot is going to be, but I do know that it's about two girls falling in love and I'm very excited to get to that. I don't need to know anything else and it's a thick graphic novel, but I'm sure I will fly through it. And you guys, the illustrations in this book are so beautiful. Tilly Walden has like the most beautiful art style and so I'm really really excited to read this book and I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, I get vibes that I'll cry. I don't know why, and I'm hoping it's not too sad, but I, I'm getting a vibe, so. I picked up Sing Unburied Sing by Jessamyn Ward. I feel like there are certain books that I just need to read, and this is one of them. I picked it up because mostly because of the sticker here. You can see I got it for a very low price, but I know that Jessamyn Ward is a talented, talented writer, and everyone talks about her. I was actually at work talking to someone, and they were saying how Jessamyn Ward is so talented but also underrated and so I felt bad that I hadn't read anything by her yet and so I wanted to give this a shot and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to pick it up. Do not know what it's about but it's 
critically acclaimed like I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful story then I have the dare by Harley LaRue I talked about this in one of my wrap-ups I think it was my February wrap-up yes it was my February wrap-up and this is a smutty little very short like novella about this girl who goes to a party and she ends up like running into the guy that she used to kind of pick on in school they end up spending the whole night together and the roles were reversed and he gets to be the one in charge and that's all you need to know about that i really enjoyed this i gave it four stars i think and i read this because joe harris over on her channel said it was one of her favorite books of 2020 and so i was like i don't ever see these really appear on people's favorite books list so that's probably just because of who i watch but i was interested i like my smut i like a nice good short fiction so yeah i really enjoyed this one speaking of smut i just this came in the mail like yesterday i got along for the ride by mimi grace a wonderful person commented on my tbr challenge video from early january and i had mentioned that i have to read a book that features a road trip and voila this book features a road trip and someone had suggested it for me to read i'm actually currently reading this one it's got a little bookmark in it right here I was reading it last night and although the road trip is only like one part of the book I'm really enjoying it and it still counts so obviously I'm counting it so thank you for that recommendation I am reading it now and it is a fun ride and I'm not just talking about the car ride hey gotta go I gotta go oh my god wait this is all oh wow this entire section is just steamy reads um I picked up from blood and ash I bought this last month and I read it last month I've talked about it in my March wrap up if you want to go watch that. Really enjoyed this book. I also just got in the mail yesterday, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, now that I know that I am going to be obsessed with this series. And I'm very excited to read this with the way that things left off in the first book. I want to read it right now, but I have so many things I need to read. And this book honestly made it very hard for me to focus on doing my work and focusing on my responsibilities. So I really cannot afford to pick this up when I need to like be focused on school and I need to be focused on work and it's gonna get very busy the next few days so I just I can't afford to pick this up yet but I want to so bad and the next porn with plot that I have is A Court of Silver Flames I cannot believe that I bought this I kind of wrote off the A Court of Thorns and Roses series because I personally did not like the third book I know I've talked about this before so sorry if I'm being repetitive but I personally did not like the third book very much um it really ruined the series for me even though I enjoyed book one and two and so after that and with like a core of frost and starlight i just knew that we didn't really need the continuation of the series i wasn't interested in any of the other stuff that was going on and so i haven't read a quarter frost and starlight let me know if i need to read that before going into this i think that most people said it was just filler and fluff but if there's any important details that i need to know before going into this book please let me know but anyway i've just been like seeing all the hype about it on instagram and on booktube and stuff like that and i just I just I've been promised a lot of steaminess and that's what I'm most looking forward to. I don't think Sarah J Mass is the most talented writer but I do think she knows how to really hook you in with a book and so I'm excited to read this and see my thoughts on it. The final book I spent my hard-earned coin on is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This is a continuation of the Grishaverse and it follows Nikolai who we meet in the other books and he's my favorite character. I love him so much and I need to find out what happens to him because he's my favorite boy. I love him so much. And speaking of Lee Bardugo, getting into my last pile of books, these are all books that I thrifted and I found for the cheap cheap which is great and one of them was Language of Thorns and this is just like a short little story collection. I guess it's like stories that take place in the Grisha world, maybe like fairy tales and things like that. So I found this really, really cheap. I got it for five bucks at Second and Charles. And I was really happy about that because it is such a stunning book. It's so pretty and the, it has illustrations and stuff. And you just, you don't get that. You don't get that for cheap, you know? And so I'm really happy to have this. I don't know if I'll ever read it. And I, I know people aren't really a fan of her short story collections, so we'll see about that. But I'm happy to have it, and it looks so good next to all the other books. I got The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tuchok. And this was as cheap as cheap can be because I found it at my little free library. And I only picked this up because I've A, I've heard of it before, and I know it's like a YA fantasy. But B, because Lainey Taylor said it was fierce and glorious. And 
I love Lainey Taylor. I trust her to tell me that something is good. Then I got some books from an Instagram account that is selling their books and I can't remember what it's called right now but I will link it down below if you're interested in following them. But I got Captive Prince and I got The Unhoneymooners from them. The Unhoneymooners is just one that I've been wanting to read because people talk about it a lot. I've heard very mixed things. Some people really don't like the books. Some people do like the book. I actually just watched a video last night from the Bookish Potatoes and they were saying that this book is like, uh, just go with it, which is that rom that rom com with Adam Sandler, right? And what's her face? Jennifer Aniston. That's who it is. Um, I enjoyed that movie. I thought it was really funny. She compared it to this one, saying that it has the same vibe as fake dating, going to Hawaii. The Captive Prince is a male male romance about this prince who is held captive by a king or another prince. I don't know, but things happen. There's a romance. I have heard things that are kind of questionable about this book so I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not anymore but I was interested to read it a long time ago when it was kind of circulating around booktube and I want to see for myself whether I enjoy it or not and if I think it's problematic so I have this now. Finally I have three more books to show you and that's it. I got Friends with Boys by Faith Erin Hicks. I don't remember where I recognize this name from. I feel like Faith Erin Hicks illustrated Pumpkinheads. I will double check and make sure I'm right about that. But I saw her name and I was like, oh yeah, I recognize her. I think she did Pumpkin Heads. I want to read this. This is about a girl who's about to start high school, I believe, and she's never had any friends. Oh, she's actually, well, she was homeschooled her whole life and she's about to start high school. Missing mothers, distant brothers, high school, new friends. It's a lot to deal with, but there's just one more thing. Maggie is haunted. I totally forgot about that. Apparently Maggie's haunted. There's like a picture of a ghost hovering over her in the back. So that's interesting. I kind of really forgot about that. I thought it was going to be a cute little story about her like being friends with boys for the first time. Nope. <laughs> so there's that. I hope that interested you. I'll let you know how I feel about this. Then I got To Best the Boys by Mary Weaver. And this I saw going around booktube a long, long time ago. It's about this girl who enters a competition that I can't remember what the prize is, or I think it's for a scholarship or something. Girls are not actually allowed to compete in this competition. So she dresses up as a boy and she has to best the boys, hence the name. And finally, I saved an icon for the last bit. I have The Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco, which if you don't know about the things that have been going on around Rin Chapeco the past few days, then you're probably not on Twitter or you're probably not on book Twitter at least. But Rin Chapeco called out Emily A. Duncan for bullying an Asian author, calling her ugly and basically like kind of trying to destroy the reputation surrounding her book because they had similar themes and similar plot lines or something like that. And after exposing that, it opened up a larger conversation about how this happens in a lot of different publishing circles. So apparently that kind of stuff happens a lot and it's really terrible to find out that your favorite authors can really actually be bullies and really mean. But anyway, I picked this up way before all that happened though. I got this two months ago now and I've heard a lot of good things about The Bone Witch. First of all, this cover is beautiful. We got the gold foiling and like the girl up there and the skull and even just the little tagline here. It says, let me be queer. I never intended to raise my brother from his grave. That sounds so good. Oh, I forgot about Book of the Month. We're just gonna run through these. I got Memorial. I got The Removed. I got Gods of Jade and Shadow. I got Honey Girl. I got black buck these were all book of the month purchases that i have made in the last few months the good news is i just realized i have read three out of the five of these i've read all these and you can go watch my wrap-ups to hear my thoughts on them the bad news is i still have a giant stack of book of the month books to get to i want to get the april box because i skipped march because i wanted to catch up on my tbr and i've done that i read a lot of books However, I'm like, I know that if I get the book that I want to get for April, I'm not going to read it in April. And so I'm like, do I really want to just add another book to my stack? <sighs> Those are some of the books that I bought in January, February, March, and now April, literally up until last night. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment down below letting me know any of your thoughts. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel. You can follow me at Lala Loves Lit on Instagram if you want to connect with me there, or you can be my friend on Goodreads. And that's it. I'm done talking. Thanks for watching. Bye!